Today I want to talk about the benefits of extended grazing systems. What do I mean by extended grazing systems? I mean managing beef cows out in a field or a winter grazing site, either in a bale grazing program, bale processing program, or possibly a swath grazing program. Traditionally in Western Canada, beef cows have been fed forages in dry lot pens over that extended 200 days during the winter months. We know nutritional requirements, energy, protein requirements for that beef cow are lowest coming into that first trimester of pregnancy, but some of the issues of feeding cows in, in dry lot pens over that extended period is the buildup or the manure pack, straw pack found in these pens and the loss of nutrients when we go to spread that manure out on some field or some subsequent crop. Today in Western Canada, producers are using extensive field grazing systems to reduce costs. So some of the questions here at Western Beef are what's the impact on the beef cow and how can we more beneficially use those nutrients, I'm talking more specifically about nitrogen and phosphorus, by choosing the proper winter grazing site. We know that the beef cow, when she's consuming a low quality roughage, only retains about 10 to 50 percent of consumed nutrients. So there's a lot of nutrients coming out the back door. Some early work by Ball and Ryden showed that there's tremendous loss in terms of nitrogen, volatilization and leaching, which accounts for roughly 50 to 60 percent of the nitrogen loss in raw manure left in a dry lot pen. Some other work showed that when we spread that raw manure on pasture applied at approved rates, there was a marginal response to the yield or the performance of that particular pasture because a lot of that readily available nitrogen had left the manure. So looking at the amount of nitrogen excreted by a beef cow over a year, we see that roughly 124 pounds of nitrogen are excreted either in the urine or the manure. So a real opportunity here for a beef producer to utilize that nitrogen and possible phosphorus, roughly 34 percent phosphorus is excreted as well, on some type of cropland or winter grazing site and we can therefore regain the benefits of that nutrient for the growing season. One of the negative economic impacts of wintering beef cows in dry lot pens of certainly is the yardage cost. The yardage is that cost accumulated for the cost of the facilities, the labor, and other variables as well and so we found that if producers can reduce that they can certainly use extensive winter grazing programs and reduce those yardage costs. What were the objectives in our particular research is that we were going to evaluate traditional dry lot pen feeding with two ways of winter grazing that producers are typically using. The first was bale processing where there's a machine, a bale processor and a tractor going out and processing round bales, putting them into a windrow on an extensive grazing site. The other winter grazing system we used was bale grazing, where that feed is set out in the fall in a predetermined de design, then cattle are allowed access to that feed over a three-day period using portable electric fence. Some of the measures that we looked at in this particular study, evaluating those three systems, either dry lot, bale processing, or bale grazing, were the impact or the effect of these grazing systems on cow condition and performance, the change in soil nutrient profile, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, and we determined the forage response of that winter grazing site the following year. We chose a site or an old pasture that had no nutrient management for about five years prior to the experiment. This was a 20 acre pasture of Russian wild rye grass, so a stand that was long lived, probably a 30, 40 year old Russian wild rye stand, and we want to look at the impact of winter grazing programs on that as well as we wanted to look at it over a two-year time period. So was there a prolonged effect or was there a repeat of the impact of these nutrients over that two-year period? So 96 cows, spring calving beef cows, were assigned to one of three winter grazing systems. We had 32 cows per system, two reps per system. Those grazing systems again were dry lot pen feeding compared to bale processing compared to bale grazing. And of course, as a producer, you need to supply adequate water, either through a winter watering system or probably hauling water, and of course, adequate wind protection, either natural shelter belt or portable windbreaks. Some of the measures that we took were in terms of the impact of the effect of winter grazing system on cow performance. So we measured average daily gain or body weight change. We also measured body condition score. Body condition is a good measure of fat reserves of these cows. We also measured the impact of the effect of these grazing systems on soil nutrient profile or soil nutrient content on that winter grazing site. So soil samples were taken before a grazing event and after a grazing event. Finally, 
forage yield, the forage production was measured, looking at the effect of nutrients or the deposition of nutrients on forage yield of that old pasture site. Mm. So management of the cows to these three grazing systems included cows were assigned to a dry lot pen feeding system in that November time period all the way through to March where cows were fed a chopped ration, a forage based ration over that time period, a mixed hay. Our bale processing system was managed uh, allocating a one hay bale and one straw bale to the cows out in that bale processing field system every three days to control utilization or wastage of the feed as well as try and distribute those nutrients evenly across that winter feeding site and to eliminate the cost of spreading manure. The bale grazing system was managed where feed was set out in the fall and the feed was allocated on a three-day basis, one straw bale, one hay bale over a three-day period where we're also managing animal access to the feed. We're also interested in the application or deposition of nutrients to that old Russian wild rye pasture, not only by the cows in the bale processing and bale grazing, but also through equipment. We applied raw manure from the dry lot pen using a tractor and manure spreader at 30 tons to the acre. We also applied 10 tons to the acre of a compost material from a previous experiment. We also left one area of that pasture untouched using it as a control or a check. Looking at the quality of all three diets, we see that the energy content was quite similar. The dry lot feed was roughly 53% TDN, 52% TDN for the bale processing bales, and 51% TDN for the bale graze bales. Crude protein levels ranged from 8 to 9% for all three winter feeding systems. Looking at the effect of winter grazing system on body weight change of the beef cows, Looking at year one, 2003 to 2004, we saw there was no difference in body weight change. In fact, all those cows gained weight. The second year, we saw there was a numeric difference between the three systems, but they were all positive body weight change, but nothing significant. We want to see positive body weight change because we realize that these are pregnant cows out there on these studies, and a lot of that weight gain is in terms of conceptus growth or advancement of the pregnancy. What about the impact of the winter grazing systems on soil nutrient profile? We found there was no effect on phosphorus level out there in terms of pre and post grazing, the slightly numeric elevation of phosphorus content. But the real interesting aspect here was the increase in soil inorganic nitrogen, both nitrate nitrogen and ammonium nitrogen. You can see by the red bars that there was similar levels of nitrogen across all the winter grazing sites pre-grazing. So there's no application of manure with equipment and no winter grazing event, either bale processing or bale grazing. However, the following spring we took soil samples and you can see there's two and a half to three times increase in soil inorganic nitrogen where those cows wintered and no increase where that manure was applied with equipment. So a lot of that nitrogen had left that raw manure in the dry lot pen, volatilized off or leached off, so no effect on the soil nutrient profile the following spring. We also looked at nitrogen distribution. So using Surfer software, a computer program, we looked at the concentration of nutrients either in the bale graze or the bale process and you can see on the bale process side that nitrogen was more evenly distributed across that winter grazing site because we were using the bale processing system to evenly distribute feeding stations whereas most of that nitrogen concentration on the bale graze site was where the bale sat. As I mentioned, we know that animals return a large portion, beef cattle return a large portion of consumed feed nutrients back to the soil. A lot of that nitrogen is coming from the urine, roughly 1.1%, and a lot of that phosphorus is coming from the fecal material. We calculated the amount of nitrogen that would have been left out there on a winter grazing system, roughly 805 pounds of nitrogen from the feces, and roughly 760 pounds of nitrogen from the urine, even if 50% of that nitrogen was volatilized or leached off, we found that roughly 800 pounds of nitrogen would have been left, or roughly 160 pounds of nitrogen would have been left because we chose to winter graze our cows on an old pasture site and utilize that extent of nutrients. What about the effect on forage growth? If we manage beef cows out there in a bale processing or bale grazing system, what's the effect on increasing pasture yield on that winter grazing site? We can see by the pasture yield data that there was roughly one and a half to two times increase in forage yield where those cows bale grazed or bale processed fed compared to the control. Also a similar level of forage yield where the 
the raw manure was supplied with equipment. So we see again utilization or the benefits of that extended nitrogen left behind and the increase in forage yield where those cows were winter managed. In our particular study we had straw bales in there mixed in with our hay bales and the reason we had straw in the ration was trying to reduce the feed cost per cow per day. However we found that these cows came out there ate all the hay, consumed mostly hay, and then a little bit of straw and used the rest of it for bedding. However, in our particular instance, this actual straw, this leftover feed, acted as litter. Litter is very good for conserving moisture and nutrients, and so we saw it capturing any limited rainfall that happened the following summer, and we saw increased forage yield or pasture response because of that extended litter that was left out there. So to summarize, looking at the effect of winter grazing system on cow performance, soil nutrient profile, and forage response, we see that winter feeding systems had no effect on cow condition or cow performance. However, looking at the effect of soil nutrient profile, winter grazing increased soil nitrogen levels roughly two to three times greater than on, on bale process or bale graze compared to those control sites. We also saw pasture yield increase 2.3 to 2.9 times greater compared on the feed site compared to the control areas. Also we talked about crude protein levels increased on pasture where the cows were bale processed. Finally we should say that producers should choose their winter feeding site adequately to not only increase nutrient efficiency but also reduce the environmental impact.